Good morning, my dear friends. This is a very important topic. Uh, I just wanted to share with you a few things about the new draft which came out on 31st of May 2019 on uh, new education policy. We call it as a national education policy. India had many policies before, as all of you are aware. We had uh, in 1949 to 50, 50, we had uh, Dr. Radha Commission. We had a Mudaliyar Commission in 1954. We also had a Kothari Commission, the famous landmark uh, education commission in the year 1968. We also had uh, in, in uh, 1986, uh, Rajiv Gandhi has brought out the new education policy. We also had the RTE in 2008-2009. These are the major post-independent educational uh, commissions and suggestions came up uh, and based on that the entire Indian education policy has been framed. Now this government when it came for the first time in 2014 they said in their manifesto also BJP had very clearly said we want a new education policy which will uh, bring changes in the education sector uh, for the few decades. And uh, quite a lot of, uh, we all of us are aware, quite a lot of uh, Indianized, India-centered education policy which they wanted to bring. And in 2016, they formed a commission for this purpose under the leadership of uh, Dr. T. S. Subramaniam. That commission wrote the report and uh, there were a lot of anomalies and people criticized it within the parliament and outside the parliament. We all uh, pointed out many uh, contradictions in the policies and uh, and, and uh, the lacks, uh, many areas which lacks uh, improvement have been pointed out to the government, etc. And the government um, heard us and listened to us and they said we will form a new commission uh, and the commission started working. And this commission, headed by a famous, uh, India's most famous space, space scientist, Dr. Kasturi Rekhan, and consists of other nine members, and the commission report was come in. In fact, uh, in 2017 itself, the commission uh, completed the work by the end of December. All 2018, they asked for three months extension and three months extension like that. Uh, just before the election, the government could not declare, and they waited after the election, and immediately after the election. In, uh, on May 31st, when they took over uh, for the second time, within a week of their uh, second term, uh, immediately they declared the new education policy draft. And in the draft, we have gone through quite a lot, and uh, the draft has four areas. One is about the school education, second about um, higher education, third about the other areas like uh, uh, technical and um, uh, skilled education, etc. And fourth, uh, about uh, the reforms which we need looking forward to. So, many things have come, quite a an extensive, comprehensive report it is. And when you ask me about the, uh, what are the things which we can point out, there are a lot of good things. A thorough study, the vision is quite okay, but then one word I feel is, uh, it is missing is the global view, global perspective and uh, global education, global citizenship, etc. is missing. It's only talking about India-centered education. Uh, I think they will explain to us what they be. And uh, we also have uh, tremendous changes about the structure of the schools. No? You know, I'm sure that you know, that uh, we had the Kothari Commission suggested uh, 10 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2. That was the structure all over India we followed. But now this commission says we need to change that one to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. Um, uh, there are, uh, they must have studied thoroughly and they thought of this, this structure of change. It also says the uh, examination sector, there is a lot of reforms that have been introduced, uh, suggested, and one of them is uh, students centered. That is, students will decide when do they want to read. If they are ready, they will write the exam or they can postpone the exam and continue. According to the students' uh, decision, the examination three language policy which was uh, contentious and that uh, you know the Tamil Nadu came the entire Tamil Nadu and many parts of the southern states as well as non Hindi speaking people have raised with this issue and the government immediately uh, kind of pacified the people 
uh, and they made a kind of amendment and a change. Then we have a uh, higher education sector, there are uh, so much of changes. If, if, sorry, in the school education sector, another important thing is that RTE has been uh, modified. Uh, so far it was up to the age of 14. Now it has gone up to the age of 18. And we have midday meal has been extended. Uh, not only midday meal, now we have, we need to, uh, we will uh, have a breakfast also for the children in the schools. So that's a good thing. And then uh, another very important suggestion that they have said is this um, preschooling will be part of the schooling system. Earlier it was preschooling, as schooling was considered as a child and uh, when women welfare ministry uh, that was looking after the early childhood period. Now this early childhood will also be added up to the school education system. We have school complexes which is uh, we need to study exactly uh, the suggestions. We, need a, we also have uh, in the commission report it's a change for the schools, the public school, no private schools can say public school. Public schools uh, will be for the, only for the government schools. Uh, the commission also <laughs> says, sorry, the commission also says uh, the change of uh, the, the name for the ministry, which, you know, the MHRD ministry will be changed into Ministry of Education. And uh, another important thing they are saying is to, to the, the aim of the national education policy when they talk about it, it's very interesting to see the aim that is uh, the ministry says this is what the commission says to equip students with the necessary skills and knowledge which is very important because the world is changing quite fast and we need to equip our children and also to eliminate the shortage of manpower in science technology academic and industries um, and we have the draft national education policy 2009 built on the foundation of pillars access, equity, quality, affordability, and accountability. RTE time, I remember Sashidharu very clearly he says, the four pillars of uh, RTE was excellence, equity, uh, uh, what do you call, um, excellence, equity, employability, and also expansion, uh, reaching out to everybody. Now it says, uh, access, equity, Equity, quality, affordability, and accountability. Uh, so it was a good thing, and uh, all these points are very good. But then in the contention is uh, there are many areas we can uh, think about uh, it, which is going to affect, especially the grad grading of the higher education institutions. Right? There are top elitist uh, schools and colleges, and we also have the second uh, level of uh, universities, uh, which is a uh, lot of stress on research, etc. And third one is the autonomous colleges, etc. We I don't have time to explain all those things. Then we, we have also have a, a lot of uh, centralized system is going to come because there is a Rashtri Shiksha that is proposed and Rashtri Shiksha Ayoga proposal uh, is going to have a drastic change in the sense it is in the form of like Niti Ayoga, Prime Minister will be the chairman and Deputy Chairman will be the Education Minister. And a few chief ministers will be part of it, of the states, as well as a few eminent educationists will be part of this commission. But then, given the situation, and we know the bureaucracy, how it functions, etc., once the Prime Minister is the head of the uh, Education Commission, Rashtri Ayog, Shiksha Ayog, that means definitely the PMO will be the, uh, the, 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 the central, uh, center of power. They will determine, and it's kind of centralization. I directly, I see a, a lot of uh, centralization going to be, and uh, definitely PMO will control. And uh, federal, in fact, it is against the federal system of this nation because we have education comes under central, state, as well as concurrent list. Now, when uh, everything is centralized and prime minister is, uh, is the commission chairman, the, uh, sorry, the the Rashtriya uh, Shiksha chairman. That means uh, that federal system, I doubt, uh, I feel that there is some kind of a, a, a federal system is going to be undermined. And I had a serious uh, apprehensions about the constitutional provisions also, because this commission does not talk about two important things. One is uh, Article 30 uh, for us, uh, minority rights, not that two talking about the minority. The word minority is not used. Another, uh, conveniently, I feel they have avoided a word that is secular or secularism. They never talked about secularism. 484 pages, I, I just uh, read 
And I wanted to see is there anything to do. They're talking about constitution values, they're talking about Indian constitution, etc. And uh, somehow they removed that word uh, secularism from the uh, draft at all. There is no word. That raises some question in my mind, um, unless I just ratified by the uh, commission. Uh, why? Because to the uh, 1986 commission very well talks about the uh, uh, secularism as the basis of our, our education system. The curriculum must be framed on the basis of the constitution values, especially what is written in the preamble. And one of them is national integration through teaching secularism. Uh, that, therefore, so important it is. Now they are not talking about this. Uh, that raises a question. In my mind, I'm sure that most of the educationists will uh, realize that why why they are avoiding it, and the commission has to explain to us. There are a lot of areas we need to be aware. The examination system. We also have the teachers training. We have some standard grade colleges to be closed down. We also have a. Uh, many other areas, value education, for example, uh, I hope the values will not be specific to one religion or one culture. It should be of universal values and human values must be taught to our children. That is, that is the important thing. For us, I, I, I think that that will uh, the commission will take care of. Yeah. So, a uh, lot of goodness, a lot of changes. Uh, it is uh, far reaching and uh, future oriented. In fact, they are looking at the next at least three decades. This policy must be laid the foundation for the improvement of Indian education system and uh, is welcomed, but at the same time, the commission and the government must listen to us, listen to people, listen to education, listen to people who contribute to the field of education. Uh, there is no need for an ego or a particular ideological uh, you know, considerations. No? Education is education. They are looking at the future of the country and doing, for example, like the Jesuits for uh, the Christian missionaries in this country have been contributing years to this uh, education field. And we also have a larger network, you know, we are working as well, almost all the continents and almost all the countries. So our expertise, our experiences, uh, you cannot simply ignore. Even in India, we have uh, this, now only the new education institutions are coming up. There's so many corporate education, etc., 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 coming up. But then Christians have contributed uh, tremendously to the nation. I'm sure the uh, government of uh, India and the ministry will listen to us. And uh, when they form uh, the opinions of people for the new possibles, etc., they will take seriously this consideration. And uh, I, I I think it is better to have an education policy which is not an administration policy. That can be done based on the pedagogy and the curriculum formation, etc. How to teach, what to teach is the commission's uh, uh, duty, not an administration structure. But administration structure can be bureaucratically, the government can bring out how to implement all these things. That's up to them. And finally, I hope uh, uh, the educational uh, allotment of money, the financial allotment for education sector will drastically increase. You cannot have this 2.7 or 3.5% or 3 agenda and all these wonderful dreams uh, can be fulfilled, not at all. Therefore, uh, our urge is uh, at least 10 percentage of GDP should be allotted to education. And this is not a new thing, uh, even another election commission, the DR commission, the Tari commission, the, every commission formed by the government of India from the beginning had suggested minimum of 6% of GDP should be given to uh, Indian education. Uh, I wrote that much of money at least, but then, you know, it has come down, come down, come down, and uh, drastically during the last 5-6 years it has come down like anything, uh, it has come down, come to Level 2.7, I think. Uh, 2.7 is the total allotment of budget. And how will you how will you implement all these dreams, the wonderful dreams the commission gives with this 2.7 amount of money? So government has to take into consideration these serious situations. And I'm sure that all our companions, the Jesuits and uh, religious and Christian people, educators all over the country will seriously take care. This next one month is July 1st. We have one month more to suggest a seriously study a report to make a comprehensive uh, viewpoint and make uh, a wonderful pedagogical uh, suggestions to the government of India so that our country, our future, our education will be 
in par excellence thank you very much